What we will do is we will arrest the offender um, who assaulted the victim and we will take them to jail. Our priority at that point is ensuring that um, the victim is safe, right? Because the offender, they, they can only be held in, in jail for so long, right? So I mean, the, the, the potential for them to get out uh, in a fairly short period of time, unfortunately, is, is real. So we want to make sure that the victim is safe. So what we will do is we'll try to connect them with a family member or a close friend where they can go to that person's house. If they don't have a safe place that they can go, or maybe that embarrassment has kicked in and, and, and the shame and they don't want family to know, then we will offer them to transport them to a domestic violence emergency shelter, uh, the victim and their children. And it is a safe place that they can be. The offender will never know where that place is. Um, the address is not publicized, so there's even if they find out that they're at this emergency shelter, they won't know how to get there because there's nowhere that address is listed. Very good. Other yes. than with the so, um, so what will happen for the victim at that time is the resources from the shelter, and it's called uh, Brighter Tomorrows, and it's an organization that I work with, and I sit on their board of directors, um, and so we have a great partnership with them. Their resources will kick in from there and helping to ensure that they stay safe, getting them the resources that they need, whether it be counseling, whether it be um, maybe a little more longer term housing, transitional housing, getting kids set up in school, uh, making sure that all of their needs are taken care of. Uh, we also have uh, victim support, uh, a victim support team here at the police department that are full-time with our organization, and they also reach out and do follow-up with the victim. Kind of someone to walk shoulder to shoulder with them as they navigate something that is obviously very new and probably pretty scary to a victim. So we want them to, number one, know what their rights as a victim are. Two, let them kind of know what the process is gonna look like. So here's what the detectives are gonna ask. Here's what the prosecutors are gonna want to know. Um, you know, and if there's anything that you need, we're going to help you walk through that and make this um, as uncomfortable as it is. We want to make it um, the best possible uh, process that we can for someone in, in their situation. Um, what we also want to do is pursue an emergency protective order against the offender. So we want to make it to where that offender can't come within so much distance between um, the home, workplace, school, things like that. But we also understand that that's just a piece of paper and it's only as good as, as the person is willing to abide by it. So uh, throughout the entire process, our main priority is the safety of our victim, which is why we stay in contact with them throughout the entire process. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. You know, when I, I didn't have any of that, that would have been a huge help. And I also didn't have any help through the legal system. So I, I, there's some laws that I would like to have changed actually in North Carolina. Uh, I have a, a blog called the Victory Life House blog and I started like a legal, legal chapter in there for what I'd like to see changes made. And I've contacted some senators trying to, trying to find out like the first steps on how to get something like that changed. And I know you guys have been working on, on something. Why don't you tell me about the uh, Senate Bill SB 1109? Well, I appreciate you uh, bringing the Senate bill up because one of the things that I firmly believe in and I'm very passionate about is stopping this cycle of abuse before it even gets started. And the way to, to stop that, in my estimation, is by arming our kids with the tools that they need to defend themselves um, against the scourge of domestic violence and dating violence when we talk about um, teenagers, specifically when we get into the age where they get their first boyfriend, they get their first girlfriend. Um, you know, they need those resources. They need to know what a uh, violent relationship looks like. They need to know what, how something can start um, by something as uh, simple as a bad word, but something as, as a demeaning comment and how mm -hmm. over time that can actually build threatening comments, which then can build to actual assault. 
Um, and we want them to know what that looks like for two reasons. You may come from a family that has never been touched by domestic violence. And you may not recognize the signs that you are headed in that direction. And we wanna give them the tools, not only to recognize the signs, but we wanna show them, here are the resources to get out. Here are some things that you may be feeling in this situation, and those are completely normal. Tell your parents, tell a teacher, call the police, tell someone to get you out of that situation. But on the flip side of that, you may have someone who has grown up in that situation, a child, and as sad as it is, it's normal. normal. Yeah. So when, when it begins to happen to them, they may not key to the fact that this is unhealthy. I, I've seen this in my family. This is just what life is. So we want them to, to know that those things are not right. They're not healthy. And on the side of the abuser, if, if they are growing up in, in that situation and they think that that's normal, we want to show them that, hey, you may be uh, exhibiting signs of abuse towards your partner. You need to understand that what you're doing is wrong. It is unhealthy and it is unsafe. And you need to, to come back from that. And then there'll be resources for them. So what we're trying to do with Senate Bill 1109 in Texas is we're trying to require all public schools in the state of Texas to offer that education age appropriate through the entire K through 12 um, career of wow. Texas public school kids to where they are exposed to them. Because, you know, there, I read a, a statistic just the other day that over 80% of parents in Texas are not having the discussion on what domestic violence is or what dating violence is. So if they're not having the discussions, how are the kids ever going to be able to arm themselves uh, with the tools to defend themselves when this occurs? Sure. Yeah, and my parents, that I would my like parents sorry, it's going to say my parents never okay. talked about anything like that. And I started dating at 16, was engaged at 17, was married at 18. And, um, and my own daughter, when she started dating, I didn't it didn't, it didn't occur to me. You know, the only thing I thought of was maybe date rape. Um, but I, I didn't, I didn't understand abuse in all the other realms. Cause I, I don't think I'd ever experienced it. I didn't have it at my house. It didn't occur to me, you know, why would someone be that, that why would someone be that way to, to me or my children? So what, um, what prompted you to become so passionate about this? Well, there's, there's, there's a couple of things. One, um, I grew up in a violent home myself. Um, so, um, you know, no stranger to seeing uh, my mother being abused and um, my sisters and, and, and it wasn't abnormal in the neighborhood that I grew up with that my friends were experiencing the same thing. Um, so fast forward, I'm a police officer. I see this thing way more than I should. Um, and more than what society should be seeing this. And um, there was one particular incident that occurred. I was a fairly young officer. I'd been a police officer three or four years. Uh, but in March of 2000, there was a young lady here in Grand Prairie. Her name was Christine Bluebaugh. She was a 16-year-old, beautiful 16-year-old um, girl. She was a junior at one of our high schools here in the city. And um, she was murdered by her boyfriend in a dating violence homicide um, and it was so impactful to me um, seeing that such a young girl suffered such a horrific fate from someone she trusted um, and it, it really if there was any any innocence left in me at age 24 it was it was pretty much gone by that time sure and then, you know fast forward a few more years I'm the parent of two little girls one of which is, is 13 now, one is 10. Um, and, you know, I would be naive to think that my daughters, even though I do have these conversations with them, I'd be naive to think that my daughters couldn't fall into that as well. So that got me into looking, you know, hey, what does the state of Texas require? And I was really surprised to find out that there is zero requirement in the state of Texas to provide any educational resources to Texas public school kids regarding child abuse, domestic violence, dating violence, or sexual assault. Wow. 
And I, so what this bill does is it seeks to remedy that. I wonder if that's pretty common across all the states or if they're starting to come on board because you might be, you might be trailblazing right now and, and wouldn't that be awesome to have every state follow suit? You know, I would love to see that nationally. And I'm sure there are some states that require um, something similar, but you know, domestic violence is really uh, garnering a lot of attention and people, you know, a lot of politicians are paying close attention to it where maybe they weren't 10, 20, 30 years ago and it wasn't taking, taken as seriously as, as you experienced. But you know what, it's really come to the forefront through organizations like yours and Brighter Tomorrows and you know, police departments really getting out of there and recognizing that, hey, this, this is a scourge that needs to be dealt with. Absolutely. Um, and we, we have a huge role to play and we need to accept that role and we need to get out there and get the word out, make sure we, we uh, are involved in awareness campaigns and that we're doing our part uh, in ensuring that people are safe and that really the goal that we see and I, I know that you seek as well. You can start anytime. So I would really love to see this type of initiative throughout all 50 states of our, in our country, because domestic violence is something that knows no race. It knows no religion. It knows no socioeconomic status. It is an equal opportunity scourge that can and will affect anyone. So we have to really start at a young age, arm our kids to, with the, the knowledge and the resources uh, to recognize when they're in that situation and what to do when they're in that situation. And really you and I are working toward the same goal. We are working towards your organization going extinct. My organization, Brighter Tomorrows that we work with, going out of business because domestic violence is gone. It is a heavy lift. It is something that is gonna be difficult, but it's not impossible. We That's can right. do, we can do it. It's education. It's education and a woman saying, no, I've had enough life, life without abuse is an option. And I'm taking that option. And if you don't consider yourself wanting to change or to try to get better or have a change of heart or treat me differently, like I need to be treated, you know, I'm out of here. So right. she doesn't need to be in fear anymore. And she, she doesn't need to be in fear anymore because of you guys. And because there is life after abuse and she doesn't have to stay with this person and there are options and there there is help for her which is all wonderful and you're you're a big part of that so i appreciate what you guys are doing i appreciate all the police force who are who are pounding the streets to help lower domestic violence at least by number helping the victims that are out there and continuing to to uphold the support for them after they leave that's where i come in in victory life house because i think we, we miss the mark sometimes, we, they kind of fall through the cracks because I was never documented. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to talk to. I, you know, I had to figure a lot of stuff out on my own and um, ended up, it took me, uh, I think I've been out of it for four years now and it's taken me that long to get to this point where I'm at today, where I can actually talk to a police officer or chief even um, calmly and, and not bursting out in tears or shaking or, or whatnot, just from the memories. So I really appreciate you, Ronnie. I, I appreciate everything you're doing. I appreciate the Senate bill and I hope it goes through and that you do cover all 50 states. That would be super awesome. And um, I'm sorry for the computer glitches that we've been having. And uh, I just hope you have a really great rest of your day. And thank you for sharing Victory Lifehouse with your, with your victims. I appreciate that. Absolutely. It's absolutely my pleasure. And thank you for everything that you do with your organization. That is definitely God's work. Thank you.